This 2023 film had to be pulled, re-edited and re-released in 2024 due to mixed feedback. Starring Ian McKellen, it follows the story of a theatre critic who becomes entangled in a web of deceit and murder. Oh, oh, oh. Only $800,000 in the box offices globally, Oof, an geez. average theatre run of 1.2 weeks, and an IMDb score of 6.3 out of 10. Not ideal. So the big question is, what the f*** went wrong? But in the critic. Hello everybody and welcome back to Mate Night, the hottest up and coming location for movie reviews, Oof. interesting stories <laughs> and provocative questions. Ooh, very this nice. is episode 26 of The Critic. You are hosted by myself, Jambo, and the delicious, the mediocre, and the <laughs> fragilistic, but not so super Cali, it's Fred. Very nice. So delicious and mediocre. Love it. They just sounded right together. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Now, as everybody knows, here at May Night, we're on a mission to become film critics. Yeah. With that in mind, we thought we'd begin by ranking every film ever made. However, today, we will be taking our fantastic community on a slightly different route than usual because whilst Fred was slacking drinking soju in one of the careers, it was the ever-professional Jambo who managed to make this release. I need to catch my breath, man. I thought I thoroughly enjoyed that intro. Thank you. All round, really enjoyed it. <laughs> and I, as you know, don't. I haven't read anything into the critic, so you're you're surprising me with all this very interesting it's information. Quite, it's quite interesting. Uh, there are a few times there. You know how I usually be like, "Ooh, yeah, let's go." But <laughs> you actually did surprise me with a few things. I was like, "Wow, I yes. am quite interested to hear more about that." Okay, well, uh, what I'll do for you is I will start with my initial go reaction score that mm -hmm. reflects how much I enjoyed the film. Uh, then I will break down what the film actually entails, and for the grand finale, I will be applying our patented Mate Night formula to determine if this is a film you should watch, which as everyone knows, is never, never wrong. wrong. Never has been, never will be. So Fred, when you are ready, mm -hmm. come in for the score. Okay, sure. Alright, I'm very excited to hear Jambo, your review of Ian McKellen's The Critic. Obviously, critically not doing that well, audience-wise doing even worse. But what did Jambo think? What did Mate Night think? Three, two, one. Seven point zero. Oh, okay. That is a fine effort then. It's a very mixed bag. Okay. So what I thought I'd do, since you haven't watched the film, is I read the letterboxed synopsis, which is three or four sentences. I'd appreciate that. Uh, and then any questions, anything I can fill mm -hmm. in the blanks. So. Jimmy Erskine, who's played by Ian McKellen, mm -hmm. is the most feared theatre critic of the age. He lives as flamboyantly as he writes and takes pleasure in savagely taking down any actor who fails to meet his standards. When the owner of the Daily Chronicle dies and his son takes over, Jimmy quickly finds himself at odds with his new boss and his position under threat. Mm. In an attempt to preserve the power and influence he holds so sacred, Jimmy strikes a Faustian pact with a struggling actress, entangling them and the boss in a thrilling but deadly web of desire, blackmail, and betrayal. Ooh. So what do you think so far? What does that sound like to you? So it sounds interesting. I've watched the trailer as well. Okay. So some preparation. Yes. Now, what I would be interested in understanding is what genre would you say this is? That's a, you know what? That's a very topical question because there seems to be discussion around that. Is that now, right? Okay. Ian McKellen has repeatedly used the word melodrama. Right. Okay. So I actually looked this up beforehand. I thought you might know, but and I felt like I should know. But a melodrama basically swaps out characters for caricatures. Mm -hmm. It adds dramatic plots and huge emotions and doesn't really add any depth to the characters so it's really focused on entertainment you get the archetypes you get the the, the villain and the sure. hero and and in many ways that is exactly what it is mm. um one of the things that so i watched mark commode's review okay nice and he made an interesting observation where he was basically saying that in addition to this melodramatic element it tries to have this kind of deep sophisticated meaning and it doesn't work together very well. It seems like what he was saying was that it then struggles to kind of hit either mm. because it's trying to be both an entertaining melodrama and it's trying to be this kind of deep resonant thing. Where I would disagree with him on this is the, the entertainment still hits. It's still a really entertaining movie. It's just the kind of moral messaging just seems really confused throughout the movie because right. it's trying to be this entertaining melodrama. So it's very fun. Okay. It's very fun and it's a bit morally confused. Is it satirical? N just clarify what satirical specifically means for me. So is it taking the piss out of something? 
No, not really, no. Okay. But there there are funny moments in it, mm -hmm. and they are at the expense of... One of the moral messages is about, like, uh, uh, good people and bad people, and, and people who've had bad people treat them badly because, in this case, of his sexuality. Yeah. And so the, some of the jokes are at the expense of him. And so you, you could say there's some satire around. There's a rise of fascism. It's set in the 1930s. Okay. So he's like this massive, powerful theater critic. Mm. Obviously, it's before the days that anybody could just start a, a, a film critic world. Yeah. I mean, anybody <laughs> could do that. Anyone could start and <laughs> get close to succeeding. <laughs> um, so the gay element, which is in the trailer. Yes. Okay. So that must be quite a big deal. It, the, okay, so here's the thing. It's an, it's a character exploration, okay? Mm -hmm. So he, w one of the things that they had to change on the re-edit was they put more of Ian McKellen's character in it. Right. Um, and he is... The, probably the biggest thing that's not melodramatic is that it, he is... Although he's not really a real person in the sense that, you know, a lot of films strive for realism, he is, like, not... Like, you would just never meet somebody sure. like him they do explore him in depth. And one of the ways that they do that is they explore the damage that he has been through to become this cantankerous old thing. Right, okay. And and being gay at the hands of people in that time is is a contributing factor. But I wouldn't say it's like the... And it, and it contributes to pushing the narrative at points, but it isn't the sole focus of the movie. Mm, but I can see, like, just from your description there... I can see why it would be quite confused because yeah. you've just described it as a character exploration where we're talking about what Ian McKellen would describe as caricatures. Yeah. So that in itself, trying to have a realistic exploration of a character that is only supposed to be surface level anyway, exactly. surely is quite difficult. Yeah. And, and one of the things that seems to be pretty... I've noticed a few people say about the movie is he's almost unredeemable. And then mm. one of the th big mistakes they make is they try to redeem him with uh, his, they somewhat successfully redeem him with the context that made him. But for the duration of the movie, he is an unforgivable asshole. Right. Okay. And then what they do is, what one other person who I will not try and claim as my own words, almost as an afterthought adds like a scene at the end to try and redeem him as a person. And I think that what they were saying was that it's not enjoyable having this character who you just don't like. Right. But for me, because they let him be a bit complicated and he was so zany and interesting, I didn't really mind it, but he wasn't, he wasn't the protagonist that you love. He really was a piece no. of shit. Like, he was a bad guy. Yeah, which can can be enjoyable. But, as you say, it gets it gets stretched if you're then trying to... Redeem them. Redeem them. In the last minute. So, talk to me about your... Which area is the film you enjoyed? So, probably the, the thing that the critic... This is what everybody agrees on. And okay. and this is something which I always make a point of coming out with my own takes before I see other people's reviews. And I observe right. the exact same thing. Um, for me, it, it really set Ian McKellen apart from everybody else. This was a great demonstration of why Sir Ian McKellen is an unbelievable actor. Top notch, yeah. So me and you have done a bit of theatre, right? Mm -hmm. We did it at school together mm -hmm. so we've di we've certainly dipped our toes in it and so we're kind of familiar with that world and there are idiosyncrasies of that world and of the people within that world yeah. that you would recognize when you meet people you're like i know they've got a theater background yeah you just recognize it there's something about it and this film is crafted not just by the writer or the director or the actors but everybody in this film loves theater right Okay, so it permeates throughout it. There are tons and tons of instances of this, okay? But specifically, the dialogue has been written by somebody who loves theater and who loves literature. And the way it shows itself, the way I could best describe it is, you know how Tarantino's love for cinema permeates throughout his films? Mm -hmm. the, person, the people behind this, their love for theater and the writer's love for theater and literature permeates throughout this, but it doesn't translate as well. 
Mm. And one of the areas where that struggles the most is the dialogue, because basically what you've got is lines that are incredibly poetic and really, really beautifully put, but not what a, a human being would ever say. Mm. And every single other actor on the set, a lot of people have said Gemma Arterton was very, very good. And Mark Strong was very good. Mark Strong's in this. Yeah. He had hardly any lines, uh, but he was awesome. Gemma Arterton wasn't that good, to be completely honest. And okay. and it wasn't because she isn't a good actor, but because these lines of dialogue just sound strange coming out of people's mouths. They just okay. sounded weird. Now, I've brought one line of hers that I could find. So she's speaking to Jimmy. Mm-hmm. And she is basically saying to him, um, she's pleading with him and she's saying, why are you so horrible to me? And the line is, I grew up reading you. I wanted to act because of you. I so wanted to meet your standards, but you think I'm appalling. Now, when she said it, I just thought, I could hear that on a stage, but it doesn't sound right on the big screen. It just sounds weird. Everybody struggled with it, except from McKellen. Right. He didn't just manage to make these lines sound real. Right. He actually sung with them. He brought something okay. out of them that regular dialogue just doesn't have. A lot of the delivery that he came out with felt both real and better than real. Okay. And he managed to make insanely difficult dialogue work. And so I just came away from it and I thought, Ian McKellen has just demonstrated... Not just that he can interpret incredibly difficult dialogue, but that he can make it sing on the big screen. Something really interesting about that is uh, there's an, a very old um, clip of Ian McKellen on the Dick Cavett show, okay. which would have been in around maybe the 70s or the uh, Dick Cavett show went on for a long time. It could have been a bit before that. But this was a young Ian McKellen. Now, for many people, Ian McKellen only really gained notoriety in the late 90s early 2000s when okay. he was in uh, the x-men and lord of the rings yep. uh, and there's a film like monsters that uh, i can't remember exactly what it's called where he got a, an oscar nomination now he was a of he was pretty old when he became globally famous mm-hmm. before that time he was a very successful theater actor but certainly mm-hmm. not a household name uh, and on um youtube that dick cavett show has quite a lot of very famous clips. It was like a talk show in America, but a bit more intellectual than the, the stuff you see now. Some really interesting yeah. conversations that go on, brought in loads of interesting people, politicians, people on sides of different um, uh, arguments and, and different political stances, as well as actors. A little highbrow, famous, a little kind of little like sophisticated highbrow, stuff. But it wasn't just like supposed to be you know educational. It's just how talk shows were. Yeah, for sure. And now it's a bit more... Entertainment just, focused. Yeah, exactly. Now... There's a really interesting um, uh, clip from Ian McKellen. So before he was a household name, even in the UK. Sure. And he went over, it's an American talk show. And he is talking about the difference between film and stage acting. And it's how his main points are around how you are, when you're inhabiting the screen, your, your micro expressions need to be on point and you can kind of do, you might be able to do whatever you want with your hands. And he makes a comment how you'll have really successful film actors go on stage. And it's, it's quite painful sometimes because of the way they, they don't know how to move their body. They feel out of place. And it's interesting that he was the one who that theater talk translated so well for yes. as someone who has been so successful in both mediums. Uh, and clearly he was a step ahead of the others in terms of achieving Absolutely. What they were trying. It really highlighted specifically his professionalism. You know, yeah. like you say about how he his he has been successful in both worlds. And I really want to make it clear that I don't want it to sound like I am saying anything bad about the rest of the cast because I actually think the real thing that let it down was more the dialogue. It was just mm. way it just wasn't meant for the screen. Right. And there are very few people who could make it work the way that he did. Now, thank God he had 90% of the screen time or 80% of the screen time because that absolutely rescued the film. Nice. Pretty much every review was just like, Ian McKellen carries a mediocre film. Right, And so 7.0 was my gut reaction score. Ian McKellen was outstanding in this. Really? Okay. He was just amazing. He just, and it was, he, yeah, it wouldn't have been the same without him. And then 
a lot of the other stuff kind of held it back and it was quite sloppily put together i want to say but yeah mckellen was just amazing in it so much fun to watch and and such a professional very nice so overall thoughts then we're going to put this into the the mate night formula in a Mm -hmm. moment but i guess precursor before we find out what your final score is generally do you think it's something that people should be seeing probably not no. no, I think like if you if you love theater, yeah, I think mm. I think give it a watch because you'll see what I mean. You can just tell that the people in it aren't film. None of them are film actors. I guarantee you every single person on that set has worked in theater. Mm. They just loved it. Um, but if it's had basically zero impact on the world yeah. with an 800K global budget. That's crazy. And if it's really quite mediocre but ian mckellen is amazing in this but ian mckellen's amazing in a lot of stuff so if you're mm. going to watch something that ian mckellen's amazing in watch something that ian mckellen's amazing in and the rest of the stuff is pretty good as well yeah. <laughs> it's not terrible it's it's really entertaining it's really fun it's very very silly and mm. it really should be taken as entertainment and it felt like they just got a bit confused trying to add moral messaging in there right. Um, but it was still entertaining. It didn't detract from that fun. So yeah, seven point oh. I, I felt pretty happy about. I was like, it's not a bad film. Okay. Nice. So we're gonna put it into the mate night machine. <laughs> beep boop beep boop beep, and it's gonna spit out a correct number, a perfect score. But a perfect score, and you're gonna be dro- all the impetus. Not that we're giving the game away. Yeah, oh, like, the secret of mate night formula that we've been actively trying to televise for the last <laughs> three or four months. It's very secret. <laughs> Top secret. Okay, cool. Um, be back in a moment. Yeah, excellent. Nice one. Apart from the long form listeners, if you're on Spotify or any of the podcasts, we'll, we'll probably just fire this right out. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Uh, uh, the critic Jimbo. So I gave it a seven point oh. Right, plot. Um, it was incredibly simple. Not exactly groundbreaking. Not terribly well rounded off, but quite entertaining. So six. Definite mixed. All right, cool. Um, character. I. I f- this is a non-subjective round, so it's going to get lower. I quite enjoyed this very complicated piece of shit character that we followed. Okay, yeah. None of the other ones were really fleshed out too much. But he's the most important one, so that's. I I don't think that the characters were very well made. I don't think. Right. I would say it seems like another comfortable six because they did really try to go hard on making this character, this Jimmy Erskine character. Yeah, a a, a character study that's a melodrama is a bit all over the shop, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dialogue, very beautiful on the page, no doubt, but for a film. You not said it's good. bad, you're bad, yeah, isn't it? So this would be quite good. quite a low score. I think four. Okay, not not getting below four. That well, is... three starting to get where it's like that's a fucking insult. So it wasn't that bad. It was just it, it was just out of place. It just felt a bit wrong, but it wasn't terribly written. It was just a bit. It just would have made much more sense on a stage. Okay, cool. Um, performance, McKellen, amazing. Everyone else. Basically, the only other two real main performances in it were Gemma Arterton and Mark Strong. Mark Strong was great, but he basically was just quiet Mark Strong for a lot of it. Gemma Arterton really struggled with some of the lines, I thought. what's uh, What would you give McKellen out of 10? He was really good. He was really, really good. I'd probably be comfortable giving him a 9 for that performance. Oh, because, okay. it, because I understood the challenge that he had to take on and not just... He, he didn't just complete the challenge, he finessed it. Mm. So, so what about all the tertiary characters then? Were there? There really weren't tertiary characters. There were, there were like there was really just the three of them. Um, She was, and Mark Strong was really, really. Mark Strong was absolutely fine. Mark Strong would be a seven. Gemma Arterton, I think, definitely you could start to see her struggling a lot. So I'm gonna go. I'm tossing up six or seven. I really think Ian McKellen did more of an amazing job than Gemma Arterton let it down, especially given that other people seem to disagree with me and think that Gemma Arterton was pretty good. Okay. So there's a good chance maybe I just didn't quite get it. Mm. So I think I'm going to land on seven. Okay, mate. All right. Um, Visuals. Right. Another situation in which it really was made by theatre for theatre. Like Mm. it wasn't, it wasn't, it was good and it was interesting but it wasn't exactly June well things like this I tend to think so it, it's got an aesthetic right the yes aesthetic being theatre vibes yes and 
30s as well. 30s theatre vibe. So quite interesting and in how that was delivered. It was quite pleasant to look at as well. It okay. wasn't, they didn't f- like really fuck anything up. So maybe a seven. Seven. Seven is, yeah, I would probably go 6.5 if I could, which would round up to a seven, I guess. Uh, maybe give it a six and mix it up. Go cool. on, we'll go for a six. I, I do think it deserves a reasonably low score in the end. Uh, sound. I struggle with sound a lot. I started to get better at noticing it. Um, but I didn't leave going like, what a terrible song like I did with Invictus. Right. And I didn't leave going like, you know, singing the Harry Potter theme tune or the Jaws. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. So. Six. Yeah, it sounds like a six, doesn't it? Oh. Right. Impact. <laughs> oh, it's going to fall. Fucking, oh, shocking. It's going to be a real here. bad one, isn't it? Okay. So. I guess here's where we get to explore what the... I'll rank the others. What the... Yeah, good shout. What what really is a low impact? So the lowest impact... Now, this was genre realisation when we did this. Yeah, but what was it? <laughs> a few good men. <laughs> yeah, but we, we just need to redo a few good men. I think we need to do we just, a, a main night revision putting, episode. We just started putting... Two, I, I would be up for going through and seeing we if there's recorded. anything we'd be very confident changing, where we were like, yeah, we definitely want to change that. A few good men needs changing, but... Okay, so... Um, so impact-wise, was there anything else? shockingly bad, hasn't it, in, in yeah. terms of budget, Scott, in terms of uh, box office? Scott Pilgrim got a uh, six. Okay, so... And Scott Pilgrim's had time to mature and is a cult cult success now. Which this maybe could do. Like, we don't know yet. But, but we we can only take it with what. But what is it? It's been a dr- I've never heard a box office b- below a million. Never in my life. For something like, with Ian McKellen and, like, you, know, you will have heard Strong. it for, for, like, you know, uh, independent films. But no one's this ever told me a, a box a office. Film, I've box never office heard below. in my entire life something, something, hundred thousand bo- global box office. Yeah, for something like this, which is not, this, just a catastrophic failure. What was the budget? Insanely hard to find. Any information on this film. I tried Might so hard for it. That. But, I did see the number crop up a couple of times this is quite bad but it makes sense with the cast 15 million 15 mil wow okay and it's made 800,000 apparently oh, I just find that so hard to believe but I just uh, this is the other thing with that box office thing like I really researched hard and it was quite hard to find reports on the box office for it how can we give it a 2 what would a 1 be I've already be? put 2 down what would a 1 be I feel like that would be like a fucking a film that we went and watched at Manchester Independent Film Festival that nobody will ever fucking hear of. Yeah, like, okay. Like, Not I feel like you could do worse. It doesn't have a major release. Yeah, yeah. It's got Ian McKellen in it. Yeah. And Jim Rattner and Mark Strong. So there's some impact there. Yeah, okay. All right. So it adds to their so, filmography. So, so does it have to be a two? Could it be a three? No, come on. That's two. Well, this is what we're I not going to get a popular film worse than this. In terms of impact. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So bring us back in the room. Welcome back to all YouTube listeners. We have tinkered away. We've compiled the data. We've got stats upon reams of evidence and pages. Words and meaning have all been compiled together for the (laughs) unimpeachable mate night final score. And Jambo, if you want to read out the critic with a score of 5.50 out of 10. 5.50. The mate night machine has determined. It never whiffs that, does it? And you know what as well? Once again, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, yeah. I think that's perfect. Perfectly 5.5. Yeah. Yeah. It's... uh, I tell you what, let's not belabor the point. Thanks so much for listening. Really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers, guys. Bye.